Today it's time for math class. Welcome to Manufacturing Math, Lesson 1, Part 4, in which we begin playing the game of inches. Okay, so we've got a checkerboard. And of course, what we actually have is a piece of virtual material, a piece of manufacturing material, onto which we're cutting a design. It happens to be in the shape of a checkerboard because that's an easy reference point for us. It makes a very realistic grid, lets us lay out the x and y axes, and, and gives us a sort of framework for understanding. And so somebody wants us to cut a hole in it three inches in diameter. So we know how to measure the diameter. It is the measurement across the widest point of the circle. We said last time that the, the diameter cuts the circle in half. And one simple, if slightly tasteless way to remember what the diameter is, is that if someone cut us in half, we might die. And so the diameter of the circle is one way to remember um, that it, it is the point that cuts across the widest point of the circle. And then, of course, we know to cut that measurement in half in order to get the radius. The radius is that point that is half of the diameter that extends from the center point of the circle out to every point around the circle, or what you might even want to call a radial arm. It is the, it is the arm that extends from the center of the circle all the way out to each point. And while that's not a technical definition of a radius, it's a good way to remember what the radius is because it reflects the way we'll actually use a radius. We'll use a radius as a sort of arm that sweeps an arc around a circle and cuts out the hole. In this case, leaves a three inch diameter hole right in the middle of our checkerboard. So now all we have to do is just figure out the path, figure out how to tell the machine the path to cut given our checkerboard and our desire for a three inch diameter circle. We'll start with the surface, of course, our classic checkerboard that we've been working with for the last few, uh, for the last few videos. And most likely, the job, will, the job spec or the job specification will tell us where we want the hole drilled. For example, and this is just a simple sample job specification for our purposes, but it's complete enough to tell us where we want the hole drilled in the material. So our job is to drill a three inch diameter circle at the location one half square from the front border and one and a half squares from the left border. We want to end up with a three inch diameter circle one half square from the front of our material and one half, I'm sorry, a square and a half from the left border of our material. So we're going to measure the distance from the front border one half square in from the front and we're going to measure the distance from the left border or the left side one half square in from the left border now we're a little bit careless here with our units of measurement we're using the word square because of course it references perfectly with our checkerboard but normally if you're reading a job specification or reading a blueprint you would see one and you wouldn't see one half square you would see a more precise unit of measurement you'd see uh, it may be an inch or it may be a centimeter or it may be a foot or it may be um, maybe measured in millimeters or whatever but in this case we're just trying to create a visual impression that references well and makes it easy for us to remember so we're using square but just bear in mind that as you get further into this you'll see much more precise measures uh, units of measurement that then tells us where to drill right a half inch square from the front and a half inch uh, a square and a half from the left tells us where to drill so we're cutting a three inch diameter hole using a one and a half inch radius such that we end up with a three inch diameter hole a half a square from the front and a square and a half from the left so we're going to start by marking our edges we'll mark a half square from the front as our front edge of the circle and we'll measure a square and a half from the left border as our left edge of the circle. Now what we want to do is to measure to find the point that is exactly an inch and a half from both edges. Not from one edge but the singular point that is an inch and a half from both the left edge and from the front edge. So we're going to measure an inch and a half in from our left end edge and an inch and a half in from our front edge and that's going to give us our center point. It's helpful for just a second to think about the nature of the circle. What we have 
is a circle that will extend, a three inch diameter circle that will, will extend from exactly a point one half square from the front and exactly a point one half square from the left border. And that point is defined by the radius. And so we take our radial measurement and we find that point that is one rate, exactly one radius from both edges, an inch and a half from the front edge and an inch and a half from the left edge. And boom, that's our center point. Why one and a half inches? Well, of course, that's the length of our radial arm. We've already calculated that. And we know that the radial arm will extend from the center point to exactly a point, just one point on the uh, on our front edge and exactly one point on our left edge. And those points are really relatively easy to calculate. We just did that by measuring an inch and a half in from our front edge and an inch and a half in from our left edge. And the place where those two measurements intersect, that's that's our center point. And then, of course, from there, we'll use the, the radial arm will sweep now an inch and a half path in a circular arc around the circle right on that path and will create our three inch diameter hole. OK, does that make sense? Um, if, if it doesn't, it's worth reviewing. In fact, it's worth reviewing a couple of very specific points. So let's do that right now. How did we determine the location of the circle? Remember, we had a surface. We, want a, we know we want a three inch diameter circle on it. How did we determine the location? Well, we took a look at the job spec. The job spec says your job is to drill a three inch diameter circle, a half a square from the front border of our material and one and a half squares in from the left. So we measured from the front and left borders and marked out our edges. So now we know the point on the edge of our circles. And so what we need to know now is how did we determine the location of the radius? And what we did in effect is reverse engineer the circle because we know we have a three inch circle, we have an inch and a half diameter radius. So we found the singular point that is one radius from both the front and the left borders. We measure in a half, uh, an inch and a half from the front border and we measure in an inch and a half from the left border and that exact point is the center point for our circle. And of course, from there, we extend the radial arm. And the radial arm cuts the arc of our circle. So our process is to review the job spec for the location and the diameter. Use the diameter to determine the radius, right? The radius is just the, the, the diameter cut in half. And then from the radius, we determine the center point and the center point positions for us the radial arm. And the radial arm just operates directly from the center point to cut an arc all the way around the circle and gives us, in this case, a three inch diameter circle on our checkerboard or from our checkerboard, a half a square from the front border and a square and a half from the left border. Okay, if that process makes sense to you, if the calculations make sense to you, the way we walked through the process of going from the location to the size of the radius, to marking off the edges, to re sort of reverse engineering the circle and measuring back the length of the radius, you're doing great. If not, it's well worth stopping the video, go back and look at it a time or two, work through a couple of your practice sets, because before too long, this is going to very much be second nature to you. It's a, it's a, it's a, once you get the process down, it becomes very automatic. But getting to this point is a huge step forward in your understanding of manufacturing math. Okay? So now we've got, we've got one problem solved, and it looks like that's going to present us with another problem. And what problem could that be? Well, we've just moved our imaginary shop machine in an arc. But we, know, but we learned earlier that real shop machines are actually constrained along X and Y axes. They move either left to right or front to back, and of course with the z-axis up and down. Remember these, just for reminder's sake, the x, the y, and the z-axis, the x, the y, and the z-axis, the x, the y, and the z-axis. So if our machines move along x, left and right, and y, forward and back, and of course z, z up and down, how do we create a circle? 
That's actually an excellent question. And believe it or not, it's one we're finally ready to answer. We'll move forward into the answer to this terrific question, and we'll move forward into more manufacturing math in the, in the rest of the videos in this section. If you've come this far, if you're tracking with us, if you're working through your practice sets and things are making sense, you're doing great. Very proud of you. Hang in there. You're doing good work, and we're going to keep moving forward in the rest of these videos. Thanks very much. Looking forward to working with you.